Hello, welcome. My name is Dan and I am broadcasting live from the School for Poetic Computation in the West Village, New York City. There is a river behind me, there is a brick wall that way. I guess this is a green wall behind me actually. <laughs> that's not a river, that's my screen. Uh, I'm kind of still waking up. I feel like it's been so long since I was last here, but it probably hasn't been. Um, but I have some new lights, so I think Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, hopefully this looks pretty good. I've got some new lights in here. It's brighter. Unfortunately, these are halogen lights. <laughs> so it's, I was trying to avoid using them because of the heat that they emit, but I do think the quality of the imagery will be better today. I do have some LED lighting over here. As you can see, this glow coming up here. And then hopefully this key should be pretty good and I don't look as orange as I have in the past. <laughs> I'm looking at it. It looks pretty good. Um, what I would like to know from anyone watching and who is either in the chat, either on Twitch or YouTube is, is the audio okay? Is there any crackling, skipping, breaking up, are the levels good? And is the image quality good? Can you read this code? Uh, can you see me? Do I look <laughs> okay? And in particular, um, can you read what's on this whiteboard? And actually, I'm gonna take a moment here to erase what's on this whiteboard. Doesn't seem as bright as it did earlier today when I had first turned that light on. I moved it further away. But um, the question would be, you know, what's the sort of focus and quality of this? How does this particular image look? I'm gonna take a look over in my preview screen. Yeah, it looks decent. I'm watching myself now. Um, I think it looks okay. So nobody's, uh, I don't know if Twitch, Chat is going, the Twitch, <laughs> I'm gonna not focus. Okay, so um, I'm back. Please let me know if the audio is okay. I would really like to know that. Oh, I'm over here, there we go. Um, everything is okay for me, thank you. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm gonna, let me, let, me, let me try to sort of get situated here. I am currently working on a lot of different tutorial topics. <laughs> let me pull up. My overall list, uh, get the browser going here, and let me go to this. So I keep this particular gist, which has a lot of topics, um, and this is where I'm hoping to get to, although get, get, uh, and get up. So I have like some big topics that I wanna do, that'll be a series of videos, uh, probably, you know, five or six on Chrome extensions, two or three on Raspberry Pi, two or three on neural network stuff, maybe I'm gonna do that. And then uh, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do actually uh, first though is a whole set of tutorials about Git and GitHub, which people have been asking for, but I'm not doing that today because I am still, uh, um, I, now I feel like actually this setup is finished. So as long as this goes well today, it doesn't get too hot and the lighting and sound seems to work, I'll be ready for some of these larger topics. But I have been, uh, last week when I was last here, uh, I recorded, if I go to youtube.com slash Schiffman, and oh look, I'm live now. <laughs> uh, if I go to, uh, I don't know where, uh, playlists, and here, this one. So um, last week I recorded, I guess I got through four videos. I looked at just the basics of live video and capture into P5. I looked at uh, making this sort of like video photo booth thing, uh, pixel array, and made a little brightness mirror. I'll run that example in a second. So what I would like to do today, I think, is make a few more tutorials. One is I thought we would do, I would make a tutorial about something a little bit strange in that taking the pixels from live video and mapping those to DOM elements. Um, so make like a mirror with uh, checkboxes. That's what I was thinking of doing. Uh, I want to look at um, kind of a painting thing. Um, and I want to look at um, uh, maybe slit scan somebody had asked about and maybe look at seriously.js. <laughs> we'll see if that works. Uh, okay, so let's look. And I uh, see a bunch of people, 14 people in the chat, which is great. People are saying hi, like hearing that. Um, uh, somebody on Twitch is saying a slight fuzz in the focus overall, but probably um, if I walk close to the camera, that's what happens. So, uh, so everyone says things are good. So, um, so um, now that people have joined, let me just recap sort of like 
uh, a quick intro. <laughs> My name is Dan. Uh, I uh, work on different open source projects, but in particular, I spend a lot of time working on tutorials and examples and documentation for processing and P5.js, processing being something built on top of Java, P5.js being something built on top of JavaScript. And I have a new recording studio at um, a space here called the School for Poetic Computation, and I'm just trying to make lots of video tutorials. So here's another day of doing that. I, what I do is I broadcast live, so you can ask questions in the chat or you can tell me things that I got wrong. And then while I'm broadcasting live, periodically I hit a separate record button to make these you know, somewhere between 10 or 15 minute tutorial chunks, which I then upload later to YouTube as standalone videos. So that's kind of the summary of where I'm at. Um, this is kind of my list of topics. I'm gonna um, get started with making this checkbox mirror first. Um, and uh, I'm looking at different cameras. <laughs> that's the camera I'm looking at now. And, um, but if anything's amiss, please let me know in the chat. Okay. Uh, Okay, um, so let's see here. I'm gonna um, close this, close this. So one thing I'll mention right now is that I'm working in as using Sublime Text as my text editor. A lot of people have mentioned in various comments that they love uh, Atom, which is another de text editor development environment. Maybe I'll download that at some point and use that. Actually, well, maybe not right now. Um, and then the other thing that I do, oops, it seems to be closed, is I will run a little web server on my computer. Uh, come on, terminal. And you can maybe you can see that. I'll make it a little bigger. Uh, I'll run a little web server on my, and let's see, where am I? Uh, desktop uh, using Python. So once that little server is running, I can go to my browser, oops, I forgot that this was there, and I can type in localhost, and I can see that I have all the examples I've been making, and the last thing that I did, whoops, not sure why this is not working, no error, what's going on here? <laughs> Uh, huh. Huh. This is, I'm just trying to run my last example. I don't know why it's failing. Uh, let's restart Chrome. Everything seems fine. We'll try running some of the other examples. I even see this red light here, but my green light is not on on the laptop. So let's go, um, let's look at some of the other examples. Let's look at this one. Why is the live video dead on my computer? Hmm. Perhaps I should just restart. Let's, um, let's run processing for a second. All right, so I'm running into a little technical glitch before I get started making this first tutorial. I need for the live video to actually work. Um, somebody wrote in the comments, your library for using the camera with processing doesn't work. I'd uh, be glad to see if I can offer any help there, but I would need more specifics. Which library, what do you mean by doesn't work is there? Um, right now I just want to see something else. Uh, uh, examples, oops, uh, video, capture, uh, Let's just, I don't know, open any of these. Does this work? I wonder if, uh, all right, I'm gonna try restarting this computer. This doesn't seem to be working either. All right, one more thing to try. I'm just, for some reason, I'm not getting any signal from my uh, webcam. So if I say new uh, movie recording, I believe, it should. FaceTime HD camera built in. It must be like caught somewhere. Something's like using it. So I have a feeling that uh, we're just restarting uh, the computer. All right, close. 
So, you can see I've gone blank. I'm floating in space now. <laughs> Nowhere to be found. My computer's rebooting. I'm going to see if there's any other comments. Uh, it's a craft cake who wrote the library for using the camera doesn't work. <laughs> is right. Didn't seem to work. Come on, computer. You can see this. Loading, loading, loading. Oh. <laughs> I'm entertaining myself much too much. <laughs> so I don't know what to say while I'm waiting. I, have, I, will, I will use my magic water. This is my other trick. This is, you can see, eh, it's not really that magic. Oh, did you hear that sound? That's the restart sound. So as soon as this thing restarts, here's what I'm going to look at doing. Um, so what the, the tutorial that I want to do involves looking at every single pixel and doing a thresholding effect, meaning... Let's see, I want to log in as the processing user, type in the password, um, which means I want to look at every single pixel and determine the brightness of that pixel. If it's greater than or less than a certain threshold, then I'm going to either draw a white or a black pixel. Uh, this seems to have restarted. Um, let's, just, let's just look at QuickTime for a second, see if that uh, seems to have come back. Uh, there we go. There we go. Camera seems to be working. I guess I should have tested that before I started streaming. Uh, oops, am I in the right directory? Yep, I am. So I just need to get Chrome back up. And I need to get Sublime back up. Look at this. And I need to go back to there. And go to here. And shrink that. And there we go. So this is what I had hoped would happen before. So this is the last example that I made, whoops, which involves just taking, oh right, I was high-fiving myself, um, which involves taking a low resolution capture. We can see it down here. This is very low resolution. And what I'm doing is I'm reading every pixel of that, of this like video that's coming in from the camera, and I am mapping it to a rectangle on the screen. And those rectangles are getting bigger for brighter pixels and smaller for Darker pixels. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, um, okay, so, so uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm noticing there's a comment, um, which I will see if I can answer in a second. I'm gonna fix this camera. Sorry, I just had a little camera mishap. Um, okay, so, um, Remo Rudeau, if I pronounce that correctly, writes, I have a problem using the brightness mirror effect. The image freeze when I open it in my browser. Um, I uploaded the code so, um, to a GitHub repository um, that's linked to the video. So check to see if your code matches. I, you know, it might just be, you know, try, try restarting your computer, try a different browser, try a different computer. There might be something, just some glitchy thing happening in your particular browser. It's hard, sort of hard to say if you're getting a freezing effect. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to make a video tutorial in a second, but first I want to even see if this idea works. So uh, I'm going to sort of just test out this idea, and I'm going to go to Finder here, uh, my video examples, and I'm going to make one called 05 a checkbox mirror. And I'm going to close this, and go here, and go back. And, okay, so this should look similar to what we had before. So I'm going to change from drawing rectangles to a canvas and actually make a grid of DOM elements, which is going to be a little bit crazy. I hear footsteps. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so um, where was I? I am going to uh, modify this example for a second to demonstrate a particular idea, which is, let's say that what I do is just do a, th a sort of threshold test. So let's say what I'm saying is, if you remember, if you watched the previous videos, if you didn't kind of get your mind to catch up for a second. But what, I, what I'm doing here is looking at every single pixel, getting the red, green, and blue values, adding them together, dividing by three to get the average brightness of each pixel. And a threshold effect means if the brightness is greater than some threshold, do this. If it's less than that threshold, do something else. And that 
Um, and let's make that threshold arbitrarily now 127, which is kind of like halfway between 0 and 255. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to fill 255 if I'm above that threshold. And I'm going to fill 0 if I'm below that threshold. And I am going to draw, then draw a rectangle. So I'm kind of simplifying this example now in a way back to, it's, it's similar to what it was before, but you can see now I'm always drawing a, um, I'm always drawing a rectangle. And you can see that with, there's only two colors being drawn, black or white. <laughs> but I'm able to um, but really convey the content of the video even just with, um, even just with that simple uh, um, kind of threshold effect. Uh, this is good that I'm like wandering around saying all sorts of words that don't make any sense because I'm, I'm going to about to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to about to. I'm, in a moment, I will actually kind of go through a tutorial here. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, okay, so what do I want to do with this next? The thing that is important here is I want to be able to adjust that threshold. So the, the thing that I'll do there is I want to create a uh, slider. And I'm going to say uh, slider equals create slider. And the threshold should go between 0 and 255 and start at 127. And then what I can do is here, instead of testing if the brightness is just greater than a hard-coded value 127, I can always get the existing value of the slider and, uh, and now we should be able to see how this affects it, right? The threshold is really high or really low. And you can see like, I don't know what <laughs> works best. This is kind of interesting. You can see the sort of like con low resolution contours of my face. Now what is, the question would be here, what, so I want to replace all of this with checkboxes. So that's my next step. I'm going to do this twice. I'm doing this now to figure it out, and then I'm going to do it again as a kind of tutorial, although both of these are really tutorials here. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is, so I'm, uh, um, oh, look at that. Uh, okay, sorry, <laughs> I shouldn't read Twitter a while. I was noticing there were some tweets about Atlas, uh, the O'Reilly engine that I use to write the learning processing book shutting down. But anyway, that aside, here uh, I, I'm turning, look, I'm turning, picking my phone. This is my phone, putting it on airplane mode, okay? No more notifications. I don't need any like CNN headlines. Put that away. Okay, now uh, what I want to do is get rid of this. Let's leave Create Canvas there for a second. So what is the video's height and width? The video's height and width is width divided by V scale, height divided by V scale. Um, so I want to make a grid of checkboxes that is exactly that size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called columns for calls for columns, which is width divided by V scale. And I also want to floor that because I, I think it'll be a, um, it will be a whole number, but let's just do that just in case to protect here. Uh, rows, uh, height divided by V scale. And so I'm going to, I just want to have those in, I want to have those in variables, which I think will be particularly useful. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to say for var i, uh, x equals zero, x is less than the number of columns, x plus plus. And then do the same thing with y. But y is for rows. Whoops. What I want to do, ah! What I want to do uh, is, uh, what I want to do is say create checkbox. I think that's how you do it in P5. Create checkbox. <laughs> Let's see what happens. There we go. See all these checkboxes? Now I have all these checkboxes. I can check them and uncheck them. So that's the right idea. Now I want them to be, uh, I want them to be the exact. Uh, right now they're just like you can see how they're the the 
wrapping is based on the width of the browser itself. Hmm. So what I want, I need them to be exactly in that grid. The other thing is I need to store, I need to have a reference to all of them so I can like act on them. So one thing I need to do is not just call create checkbox, but I need to say something like, um, uh, I'll call this uh, check, I'll call this boxes. I need to make an array called boxes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, var box equals create checkbox and boxes dot push box. So I'm also going to put them into an array. I probably should, if I'm doing this, create some sort of like maybe div that everything gets like put into. Let's do that. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I'm figuring this out, but then I'm going to erase it all and do it again. But let's just say I make like a div in my HTML file and I call it a mirror. So what I want to do is now for each box, I want to say box parent mirror. So that means all of them will go in that div after I make each one. There we go. So we can see that they're there at the top now. But now I should be able to do something where maybe I can make the div a certain width. Maybe I should put, I should put line breaks probably. Or maybe I should absolute position the check, bo check boxes. Hard to decide what to do here. I kind of don't want to absolute position them. I want them to maintain their sort of natural flow, so to speak. So uh, certainly I could put a line break after, so right, these are, the x I'm doing every column. I'm doing every x first, which means, uh, yeah, so I want to do the y, I want to do all the x's. I want the x to be the interior loop. This is one of the few instances where this actually matters, right? Because after I do each row, I could say something like box, I, I could say var p equals create p put nothing in it, like make a blank paragraph element, and then say p.parent also mirror. Like so after I make a whole bunch of checkboxes, I put a paragraph, like an empty paragraph. This is a bad idea. Yeah, so that worked, <laughs> but it left all this space in between them. So I think what would be better is just to say create span and put in the span just a line break. Maybe I should make that a div, I don't know. Somebody who knows HTML elements can tell me. There we go, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. So there is sort of the problem if the browser window isn't wide enough, it does wrap. There's probably some like style, CSS style that I could apply to force it, like make sure it doesn't wrap. Somebody could probably tell me that if you know. Um, or probably actually, I wonder if I just make the div like um, a certain width, right? Like so if I add, some style here. Is anybody watching this? <laughs> Are you in the, somebody in the chat like say something because I've sort of lost, uh, it does say that 21 people are watching but um, I would like to know if anyone's actually, if this, if my audio is still working and all of that. So uh, if I add uh, something like this, like f a fixed width to that div, does that work? Hey, that worked. I don't know what the right width is. Let me, let me see like, uh, let me give it a background color just so I can see it. That's about right actually. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So, so that's good. So that, uh, that makes it like a fixed width. I don't need that background color. How do you comment something out in CSS like this, right? Okay, so now we've got this. So what I want to do, right, right, right now you can see down here, let's, let's get a good threshold going. Kind of like this is the threshold. So what I want to do is I want to see, maybe I want to see checks for white pixels and um, no checks for black pixels. I'm not sure. So let's give that a try. The other thing is I don't really want the canvas anymore, but I'm going to leave it there just for reference. So as I'm looping through the video, I, um, hmm, I need to try to decide if I should make this array a two-dimensional array. Doesn't really, okay, so I want to look up the correct checkbox in that array. Let's see if that works. 
So I, um, I don't know if this, so I don't have the um, x plus y times uh, columns. And then if I say boxes, index, checked, true. This is another index I'm looking up. I'm probably doing something bad here. I, I don't remember what the P5 function is for setting a box to be checked or not. Let's just pretend it's that. Uncaught reference. Calls is not defined. Ah, okay, so these need to be global variables. Uh, so I can use them. I mean, I could have used just video.with, but I kind of like having those in variables. Oh, look at that. It worked. So, <laughs> so let me do, where's my threshold? There we go. Now, can you see? <laughs> Boy, it's kind of hard to see that, but you can see that the checks are going on and off. Mm, I'm not really getting the visual effect that I had hoped for. It's not, there's not that high a contrast between having it checked and not checked. It works. I'm trying to think, maybe if I put, um, I don't know if anybody has any ideas. I mean, I could sort of play with this threshold. You know, that's, oh, maybe what I want is the inverse. Oh, I know what I want. Uh, maybe what I want is this. I want to say false, true. And then what's the threshold at right now? It's like I should figure out what that is and set it there by default. Uh, Right? That's better. So you can see, there I am. Checkbox. <laughs> Checkbox DOM element mirror. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, so it does work. People are watching uh, and saying hi. Uh, okay, that's nice of you guys. Okay, so I think that this works. So now I'm going to have a little water here. It's actually not getting it's a very cold day in New York, which is probably helping the fact that it's not getting super hot in here, even with these new lights. So that's kind of promising. Um, okay. Anybody have any questions or comments about this particular example? I'm going to now hit, um, I'm going to kind of go back to the code and I'm going to hit start over and I'm going to try to make this example in 10 minutes, kind of diagramming and sketching out um, anything that I need to do to cover it. My brain is so not working today. But it was, it was kind of out late last night. It's a long story. It's not very, it's not as interesting as it might sound. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm gonna erase this. I'm going to cycle these cameras. There's one ten right now. So what I want to do uh, actually is make sure I save this code somewhere um, just in case I totally screw it up and can't figure out what I did. Um, let's just save a backup of it in like text edit or something. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to this example. which was this, and I am going to, I'm going to <laughs> make a tutorial. How about radio buttons? That is a great suggestion. The, the reason why I'm not going to do, it's a really good suggestion. So visually, the effect might be better with radio buttons. Um, the P5 um, API for radio buttons is a little bit uh, trickier. Um, because it, it, a radio button is kind of like a collection of things and their options. It's more like a drop down kind of menu. So I'm going to, um, I, think it'll, I, I think it would be worth doing, but I think it'll, it makes for a cleaner video just to demonstrate with the checkboxes. But that is a great suggestion. Yeah, a CSS background on it would definitely help. So I might, I might do that. Um, let's see. The Twitch thing, by the way, doesn't seem to be taking off very much. I've got 22 people watching on YouTube and three people watching on Twitch, but I'll leave it running, see what happens. Okay, um, so let's go, let's see. Um, so hold on, let me minimize this. 
And let me get code up. Great. And this, ah, I'm going to take this out. Stuff in. And I'm going to take this out. I'm going to show how to do this. Okay, just getting myself ready, and here we go. Last check. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this checkbox mirror in 10 minutes. <laughs> Explaining every piece of it, talking to the camera with enthusiasm, <laughs> and making sense. Uh, okay, here we go. Hello, in this video, I'm going to take this example, which is currently I called a brightness mirror, where each pixel of the image is drawn as a rectangle. Brighter pixels, bigger rectangle. Darker pixels, smaller rectangle. I'm going to turn this example into what I'll call the checkbox mirror. So instead of drawing to an HTML5 canvas based on a video source or an image source, I want to create DOM elements, checkboxes that get checked or unchecked based on the brightness of a pixel. And incidentally, while doing this, we're going to look at an image processing effect called a thresholding effect. So I'm just going to dive right in um, if you, uh, into this code example, which was covered in the previous video, which you can go back and watch if you haven't. But I'm going to dive right in and start making it. So let's go over to the code. And the main thing, the main sort of piece here in the code is that for every pixel, I'm getting a brightness value. That brightness value is the red plus the green plus the blue divided by three, the average of the red, green, and blue components of the color. So a threshold effect is an effect where you say, ah, there is a given threshold, 127. Any pixel that has a brightness over 127, I want to do something. Any pixel that has a brightness less than 127, I want to do something else. Typically, I might assign the pixel value for anything over 127 to white and anything less than 127 to black. So let's do something like that. I can say if bright is greater than threshold, fill 255. So just anything above 127, make it 255. Anything below 20, 127, make it zero. Now I could set pixels, but since I'm doing drawing stuff, I'm not going to bother with setting pixels. I'm just going to go, I don't need to do this mapping anymore to a size of a rectangle. I'm just going to go right down, get rid of this fill, and just draw a rectangle at the full size that is either white or black based on that threshold. So let me zoom back out. Let me refresh this, and we should see. Now you can sort of now you see exactly what I'm talking about. Each rectangle in the screen is all, is either white or black, and you can see how it's white or black, white or black, and you can see how I'm getting the sort of contours of the video, almost like a silhouette, a low resolution silhouette with this threshold effect. Now one thing about it, you'll notice if I go back to this example that I hard coded a threshold value of 127. What would probably be more useful is to have a slider so that you could adjust that threshold in, based on you know, whatever this sort of existing video is. So let's actually do that. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called slider. In P5, an easy way to place a slider in the browser is with the create slider function. Of course, there's a zillion other ways you can get a slider there, but this is just one. I'm going to say slider equals create slider. And when you make a slider, you need three values. The minimum value for the slider, the maximum value of the slider, and where that slider starts. So 0 is the minimum, 255 is the maximum, and we'll start it right there in the middle at 127. So if I go back and refresh, you can see there's a slider down here now that I can move around. The issue is I want to take the value of that slider and I want to um, I want to assign it to the threshold. And that's actually a really easy thing for me to do right now. Because here, I said threshold equals 127. All I have to do now to change that is say threshold equals slider dot value. The value of the slider is the threshold. Sometimes code, it just reads like language in its own sort of way, if you read it backwards. Um, so now, if I hit refresh, you can see here, there's the image. And I'm trying to look at the camera, look at this. But as I slide it up, you can see that threshold is changing. And you can see now, with a lower threshold, all of the pixels that are rather bright behind me are getting white. And actually, only my shirt, which is kind of dark, and my hair, which is kind of dark. And you can see this is what the actual video is, right? All of those dark pixels are getting assigned um, 
a black, uh, a black value. So I, I kind of want to um, remember what this value is. So I can actually just here in the console type slider.value to see 77. I kind of like this as a threshold value. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to go and change the slider to start at 77. Of course, I can still adjust it, but now each time I hit refresh, it'll just start right at 77. Okay, so now we have this thresholding effect. The thing that I want to do is I want to take each of these rectangles that I'm drawing in this canvas and not have it be a canvas with shapes and colors that I'm drawing. I want to actually make DOM elements, checkbox DOM elements. So let's look at how we do that. If I go back to the code uh, here, I'm recording this. Yes, okay, just checking. If I go back to the code, see how I said create slider? There's also a P5 function called create checkbox. I'm just going to toss that into setup. And you can see, look, there's a checkbox now. There's a checkbox there. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a lot of checkboxes. In fact, I want a checkbox for every single pixel in the video. So I need a loop to make checkbox after checkbox after checkbox. So I'm going to go back to the code and I'm going to say, now what should I loop through? How many checkboxes do I need? Well, I need one for every X and every Y pixel. So I need as many checkboxes as the width and the height, width times the height of that video source. Um, I was going to draw a diagram, but I think you're with me. So um, one thing that I think would be useful is actually to just keep track of uh, variables for the grid. So what we've got here, so I have this whiteboard, and I insist on using it. So in other words, I want a checkbox, and there's a certain number of columns, right, and a certain number of rows. And those map to the width and height of the video. So what I think would be useful is to have variables called columns and rows so I can just keep track of that number um, throughout my code because I'm going to need to use it in a bunch of different places. So what is um, columns, the number of columns is the width of the canvas, but the canvas is going to go away. So I'm going to say 640. In fact, it's funny how I could, I could actually just sort of, interestingly enough, you know what I just realized? These, this should be actually a hard-coded value. So let's think about what is uh, 640 divided by 16. You know, I could probably do that math in my head, but I got a console here, 40. So let's say we're going to have 40 columns and 30 rows. That's kind of a reasonable number of checkboxes. So, uh, so my video definitely needs to be the size of columns, rows, and I don't need to worry about all of that math anymore of scale of canvas, because the canvas is going to go away. I'm going to leave it there right now, because it's useful to have it there as a reference. So now, what I need to do is I need to say for every column and for <laughs> every row, create a checkbox. And dun, 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 dun. there we go. So now look at this. Look at all those checkboxes. So I now have a checkbox in the browser page for every single pixel, but they're not really organized through by any logic, right? They're just all next to each other, right? And so I need them to maintain the same grid, right? I need to have exactly the number of checkboxes in the first, first row, the second row, the third row. So I need to figure out some way of doing that. So one way of doing that, I knew I had a use for this whiteboard, is that let's say I have, I have this web page, right? This is the browser. And what's happening when I call create checkbox is it just sticks a checkbox in the page. Then it sticks another one, then it sticks another one. I'm doing that millions, of, not millions of times, 40 times, 30 times, you do the math, right? And it just keeps doing that. It gets to the edge of the page, it wraps to the next one. What I want to actually do, I think, is establish a div. A div being a, a container, a box, an area in the web page. Maybe I'll call that div mirror. And I want to be able to always put the checkboxes in that div. That way I could control some style of the div. It's width and height, it's position on the page, all of that sort of stuff. So I think it would be useful to put a div. Now I could say create div, because P5 has a function create div to put a div in the page. But I think this might be a moment where it's actually easier to just dig into the HTML itself. So I've gone to the index.html file that's associated with this particular sketch. And I'm actually just in the body. Right here, I'm going to add a div. And I 
I'm going to say div id equals, woo, <laughs> zoomed in way too much, id equals mirror. So I, the id is very important. I need to give that div an id so I know how to reference it from my JavaScript code, from my p5.js code. So I want to put all the checkboxes into that particular div. So let's do that. Uh, whoops, um, let's go back to, sorry, I need to go back to the JavaScript code and I need to, I'm just going to, I need to assign a variable to that checkbox, take that, that checkbox I made, put it in a variable, say box.parent mirror. And the parent function, what it does, it say this DOM element that you've just made, put it inside that div. So that div, the mirror div becomes the parent to those checkboxes. And if I run this now, you can see there they are. Now you're noticing they're above because the canvas and everything else gets created after that particular div. Now what this allows me to do if I go back to the HTML file is add some styling for that div. So pound or hash mirror, this is CSS. Yeah, I'll re refer you to my CSS tutorial videos. But I can do some things like say uh, width and I'm going to make it a fixed width of 800 pixels. I think I kind of worked this out earlier today. I think that's going to work about right. You know, trial and error would probably get me that number. And also, just so I can see it for a moment, I'm going to give it a background color, like something kind of light, um, just so we can see that that div is there. I'm going to hit refresh. Now you can see that that's the container, essentially, the box, the div, and all the checkboxes are there, and you can see it has a little bit of a background color. Now notice, this didn't really work out. I didn't get the exact number of width to like make sure the the um, make that sure the checkboxes wrap appropriately but I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do something to like a hundred percent be right about this so in the sketch I'm looking at every single column and every single row and what I want to do is when I get to the end of a row I want to add a line break an HTML line break so that the checkboxes then go onto the next row right I want to do you know 40 checkboxes and then put a line break. Oh, I came over here and I didn't change. Look, I'm over here now, sorry. Uh, I want to put 40 uh, checkboxes, then do a line break, and then do the next 40 checkboxes. Okay? So where do I do that in this loop? I need to put a line break. Well, incidentally, I actually have my loop. This is one of the few times where whether the X is on the outside or the X is on the inside is quite important, right? Because what I need to be doing is I need to be saying, uh, First, do the first row, then all the x's. Then do the second row, then all the x's. So y needs to be on the outside. I have to do all the x's for every y. So I've actually got to fix this and put y on the outside. And then what I can do is, after I do a whole set of x's, I can say uh, uh, line break equals create div, I'll just make a div with a line break in it, and then also put parent that to what? The uh, mirror. So now I'm guaranteeing that after every row of checkboxes, I get a line break. So now let's run that. Oh, that doesn't look right. Uh, you know what? Let's try using create span. I think the div has a lot of uh, stuff it's not like in line. So let's, let's use create span. There, that's better. <laughs> I knew I missed something. So I'm trying to put something in there that doesn't have any padding or line break around it already. And a span element allows me to do that. You can see 800 pixels was about right for this particular area. I could have, you know, maybe it's 750 or whatever. But now I can also get rid of that. I don't need to uh, see the background color anymore. That was just sort of for debugging. I can take that out. And we can see now I have a perfect grid of checkboxes, the exact number for every single pixel in that source video. And you can see here, you know, I can check them and uncheck them, but that's not what I want to happen. I want to maybe check the dark ones and uncheck the light ones. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I need to have a way of referring to those checkboxes. Like I made them all and I put them on the page, but I didn't store anything. So I need an array. I need to keep track of all those DOM elements over time. How am I doing here? Uh, 13 minutes, I was trying to make this under 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, it's not gonna be. Okay, so I make an array called boxes, and what I'm gonna do is for every checkbox that I make, I'm gonna put that checkbox in the array. So I make an empty array, and I'm storing them all. So I now have this big array, 
If I refresh the page and I go over here to the console and take a look, you can see I have an array with 1,200 checkboxes in it because 40 times 30 is 1,200. 1,200 pixels, 1,200 checkboxes. There's a lot of them. They're all P5 elements, okay? And you can, there's all sorts of stuff associated with that. So now, how do I check or uncheck them? So right here, where I was saying, with my thre threshold effect, I was previously saying, if the brightness is greater than a given threshold, fill white, otherwise fill black. Instead, what I want to do is I want to say something like, check, oh, boxes, index, checked, false, boxes, index, checked, true. So what I want to do is I want to uncheck the bright ones, check the dark ones. And this is a P5 function. The checked function is a way of dynamically checking or unchecking a checkbox with code. If you don't give it an argument, it just gives you, returns you whether it's checked or unchecked, which is usually what you use a checkbox for. Okay, but this index isn't exactly right. Remember, because the index was this thing where I was trying to look up a pixel and the pixels are like RGB. So I need my own index. This index of looking up the pixels is different than the index in, into that array of, of checkboxes, unfortunately. So I'm going to make a new variable. I'm going to call that a check index, and it is equal to x plus y times uh, the number of columns. And then I'm going to use that checked index. So there we go. What I'm doing is, I, I'm doing both actually. I'm going to get rid of the rectangle in a second, but instead of, ultimately, instead of drawing rectangles based on pixels, I'm checking and unchecking checkboxes, and I have an array of pixels that I have to look up the color one way using the x plus y times 4 whole nonsense, and I have to look up in the checkbox array a different way because there are not, there's not an RGB and alpha for each checkbox, or just one checkbox. <laughs> I had to say this to myself because it's very confusing. Okay, let's take a look now. Hit refresh, and we can see here. Come on, video. There it is. So you can see that, right? There I am. I'm going to high five myself again. That's not really working. But you can see my face here <laughs> in checkboxes. Can zoom in a little bit. You can see those checkboxes are going. Um, up and down based on my face here. I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Okay, this was exciting. It worked. Sorry, I wasn't sure whether that was going to happen. So what I want to do now is just get rid of, I'm going to say, instead of create canvas, I'm going to say no canvas. And I'm going to get rid of oh, load pixels, which doesn't need to be in there. Uh, and I don't need background anymore. There's no canvas. I don't need uh, these fills anymore. I just want to simplify this. I don't need this anymore. And now, if we run this again, we should see just the checkbox mirror on the page. And you can see here I can play with that threshold still. You can see based on what I do with the threshold, <coughs> we get different sort of effects. And there it is, the DOM checkbox. Uh, I'm hit refreshing it because I like that value of 77. The um, DOM checkbox mirror. So I don't know. So um, somebody had in a comment earlier said, oh, wouldn't radio buttons be better? Maybe you'll get a a better effect. You know, I would encourage you, can you do something weird with like sliders, make just regular divs, text on the page? What kind of, um, I would love to see people's Frankenstein creations of DOM elements of visualizing image data with no canvas and no pixels and no drawing, just manipulating DOM elements themselves. So give that a try. Tweet me or write in the comments if you make something. I would love to see how it turns out. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay, so that was medium smooth. Uh, so I'm looking at the comments. Uh, um, somebody said, cool, man. How was that? Was that okay? Did that make sense? I kind of feel like I lost myself in a few uh, tangents there. I'm going to check Twitch. Tighten up the checkbox grid, maybe somebody. Uh, yeah. I think somebody on Twitch is very confused, probably, because they just... Uh, so... Um, San Diego Classic says, uh, I'm confused, or if you're confused, imagine, probably goes, so if you are, if you just accidentally came here, I would just, and, you, um, and you're confused, I might go back and watch some of my earlier tutorials that kind of like led up to this. I don't know how else. Okay, uh, Spectron writes, 
Would it be possible to have a dynamic threshold calculating the average of the brightness value of every pixel and set this average as the threshold or something? Absolutely, that's a great, that's a great suggestion. So you could, you could have a threshold value that adjusts based on what the camera is actually seeing. So if in a bright room it has a sort of higher threshold, in a dark room it has a lower threshold, and there might be some other sort of magic learning types of algorithms you could think about applying. So certainly that, I mean, that's something you could absolutely do. Um, all right, so that recorded. Let's look, it's 1.35. I was gonna try to do this until like two, <laughs> or a little bit after. I've been streaming now for uh, 50 minutes. I don't know how much, I have a sore throat today. Uh, where is my uh, list of things? Videos to do. Oh yeah, we should definitely do the next one. This one is one of my favorite ones. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, so if you guys have more questions, type them into the chat. I'm gonna start opening up some examples and getting myself situated to make another tutorial which is about kind of doing a painting. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show, uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, uh, this is, let's see if this will open. So what I'm doing now is I'm opening a project that I actually made, not in processing, but I made this project in 2002. And it is a, um, I'm gonna see if this runs. Um, so what this project does is it has all of these flocking agents and what they do is they um, color in, uh, so I'm looking at it to see how this looks. They smear colors that they're picking up from a camera. So what I want to do is basically like show how you make something like this. But I want to, um, there's a couple things I want to do with this. So I think what I want to do is uh, just add a few things. Where, where am I? Am I in draw here? Yes. Uh, so like if mouse pressed, Background uh, zero. Oops, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's just add, put this on the desktop. Uh, oops. Ah! Desktop, desktop. So I want to, uh, I think what I would like to be able to show is this. So that's really what's going on. There are all of these uh, agents moving around. Uh, and then when I let go, there's, the background is not cleared. Okay, so that's, I think that's a, and then I wonder if it's worth um, just putting the video in the top left corner so you can kind of see it. Actually, I'm just gonna do that in the, in the debugging. So let me do this. Where's the mouse come out? Oh, right, so you can see that's what it's actually doing. And then it's doing it as a mirror though. Okay, so I'm gonna show this as an example. And then what I'm going to do is make a project that does this. Ah, I know what to do. And I'm gonna base it off of the example I have from a previous video with all those things that move around randomly storing their history. Okay. Uh, so what I need to do very quickly is, not very quickly actually, I just need to do this, is do, uh, I'm going to call this 06 painting, and um, I'm going to go to Sublime, and I'm going to, uh, um, oh, I kind of want this checkbox mirror would be a better, oh, this brightness mirror would be a better one to start with. Oops. Just sneeze, it's gonna be loud. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, just checking the chat. Uh, there, so there might be some questions in the chat. I'll get to them in a second. Let me get what I'm doing here. Uh, so I have a basic example now. 
uh, which if I go here, should just have this and the video. And now what I want is I want to get, so a, a while back I made a video. Let's see if we can find this. Um, it was called, uh, let me go under playlists. It's under P5JS tutorial additional topics, drawing object trails. So uh, now, I'm, now I'm watching it. This is an ad inside an ad. So uh, P5JS part uh, 9.4. So I should be able to go to um, GitHub, Shiftman, video lesson materials and go to code P5JS 9.4, and I should be able to grab the code for this particular kind of particle. I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna create a new file, and I'm gonna call it uh, particle.js. I'm gonna paste it in here. Now the interesting thing here is, <laughs> I realize I don't actually need the history, even though that's what that whole example was about, um, because I'm just not going to draw the background. So I'm going to just do this. So I just need the particle, which is just a randomly moving thing. Obviously, you could be more thoughtful about how you have things move. Uh, and then I'm going to, I, so I don't need that anymore. So let me just make sure this works. I'm going to say var particle particle equals new particle, particle.update, particle. what did I call it? Maybe I called it show. Uh, particle is not defined, right? Because I need to reference it in the HTML file. I don't need this styling. I don't need this div. And Seems to be working. So let's take a look. Particle, it needs an X and a Y. And it also, uh, let's make it white. It needs an X and a Y. So let's put it in the middle. Great. So we have a particle moving. We have a video. So I want the particle to pick up the colors from the video. Then I want to have a lot of them that I want them to smear. Um, so let's just, let me just take a, do a few more things just to sort of see how this is going to work. I'm not going to go through all this. I'll start recording in a second. Background 51. Okay, so you can see how that works, but probably one thing I should change is have no stroke. And you can see, so this is now, in essence, smearing colors. Uh, and those colors could be picked up from the live video. Okay, let me check the chat. This I'm pretty much ready, I think, to go with these examples to set the stage. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the, anyone have any suggestions for playing with MIDI with P5? That's a good question. I don't, so I'm going to move on to the next question. Although I will say the P5 sound library has a ton of features. You might check that out to see if there's something in there that you could use. Um, What's your view on var creation? Should vars only be created outside a loop? Does it matter with JS? My view, honestly, is an, um, you know, I'm probably going, someone's gonna like, the, the variable police are gonna like <laughs> charge in here the, and like take me out in variable handcuffs. But you know, I kind of feel like whatever works, it's fine, don't worry about it too much. Uh, you know, it's kind of, I think there are larger questions of kind of efficiency and optimization when you get to a certain point in a project. But I think while you're being creative and trying to figure out an idea or make something work, however it kind of like makes sense to you to organize stuff is just fine. I do think on some level though, um, having variables scoped to only where you need them can help you from an organizational standpoint. So there's not really a lot good reason to have a thousand global variables if certain variables are just sort of local to inside a particular loop somewhere, I would declare them in there. But there's a lot of particular JavaScript stuff with that. That's what, that would be a perspective, I would say. Um, what if you wanted to manipulate heading size correlating to the amount of similarly grouped pixel colors? Um, I, I, I lost track of where this is, um, 
what this is referring to, but maybe if you're talking about the flocking, you could it would be interesting to think about having those agents that are painting colors actually move towards certain kinds of colors, um, have forces that drive them. I think that's a very interesting idea. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, oh, brackets. Uh, someone mentions brackets, which is also a great um, editor environment that you could potentially use. Um, I should probably do. Um, I should probably do some more tutorials with um, other editors like Adam or Brackets. Ah, let me mention something to you guys really important if you're trying to play with my examples. There is a bug in P5. Let's go check on the current status. It is bug. I have this one memorized. Uh, uh, it is it, under issues 1079. So there is an issue where when, I'll show you exactly in the example what the problem is. When you call video.size and scale it down, the pixel array doesn't actually scale down as well, which you mo almost always want because you're making the video lower resolution so you can look at fewer pixels. So I have made a modified version of p5dom.js, which you can get if you go to the Video Lesson Materials GitHub repository. Um, that fixes that bug. And that bug has not, let's see if there's any additional discussion. Um, that bug has not yet been resolved. So I'm making these videos, the tutorials that will live on YouTube without really referencing that bug because at some point in the future, <laughs> people will just be like watching the video tutorial and P5JS will do that thing. But if, I just want to mention that because if you're following along and, and playing with the examples, what you're going to want to get, and I'll just be a little bit more clear about this, is if you go to slash shiftman slash video lesson materials, code P5JS, and, oops, sorry, the ones that are 10 point whatever. I haven't uploaded the ones from today yet, but if you get the one that's like 10.4 P5JS brightness mirror, it's going to have the P5 li the modified P5 library files that I'm using that have that bug fixed in them. And then at some point, the actual new release of P5JS will have the bug fixed in them. But for now, I'm, and I'm, so anyway, I, if that's unclear, please ask in the chat. Um, <clears throat> so uh, people are suggesting you do a tutorial with brackets and with Adam. So let me, make, let me add that um, to my uh, list of things. So I'm going to, um, so I'm going to make a item which is like different editors with P5JS. I'm going to add uh, brackets, Adam, <laughs> etc. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, where am I here? I'm a little lost. Why did I? Oh, update. Okay. So uh, that's just a note that I'll remember later to do that. Okay, let's see. Where am I now? Here we are. Painting. That's here. Um, the video is loading. The pixels are loading. The particle is updated and showing. Why? Oh, I'm way too far over. That's the problem. I'm supposed to have my laptop here, so I stand here and don't block the code. Was I blocking the code in that entire previous video? Oh, God. I hope that wasn't too bad. Uh, such is life. Okay. Um, so let me call this one 06 painting. And uh, I'm going to close all these. So all I need is sketch and particle. Particle and sketch, and that's running here. Um, I can close this. I should probably follow this all the way through and make it, but whatever, I'm gonna improvise it. And I'm gonna get processing open. Uh, make this small, so I don't really need it. So this is just for demonstration purposes. And let me wonder if the browser is using the camera, can processing use it as well? We're about to find out. Amazingly, yes, although it is running a little bit slower. So I think what I'm going to do is get back here. I have the code open, processing open. I am also going to uh, erase this whiteboard. Does this seem kind of dark to you guys, by the way, um, this view of the whiteboard? Let me know how the image quality is, if it's blurry or dark. Um, it's definitely better than it was uh, last time I did this, and I could brighten it for sure. I know a way of bright, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not going to do that right now. I, I might move the light closer to me or whatever. Anyway, just let me know if it seems dark. Uh, okay. 
Um, okay, so we're at an hour. I've got 26 people. I'm going to just check the Twitch chat. Um, Uh, thank you, San Diego Classic. Uh, nice comment saying that there you like the setup. I've been working very hard on this setup, so that pleases me uh, greatly. Okay, so here we are. I am going to do the next video, painting a portrait with things moving and pixels and yada, 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 yada. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to cycle the cameras. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start this video with this just running behind me. And maybe I will even let it run for a little bit. Uh, now, the question is, oh, interesting. So I also, I think what I should do is angle this. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this doing something. How, look how orange I am. Okay, so that's pretty good for right now. Okay, so what does this look like? Oh, yeah, it kind of works. <laughs> I'm looking at the chat. Could be a bit brighter. Okay, I'm gonna look into making the um, whiteboard view a little bit brighter. So I can see I'm so much brighter over here and it probably is like a setting on the camera. Actually, there's like, what are those things called? F-stop something, frustrum, fro frogles, from I don't know. Any, it's, I'm, it's pathetic how I supposedly know something about technology. I'm like completely inept if it's not like software. It's like the camera is like a physical thing that I cannot touch or else I might break it or hurt myself. Okay, um, here we go. I have to reach over to hit record. Uh, Look at that. Uh, yeah, there's, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to do this. Here we go. I'm like rolling up my sleeves. It's getting, it is getting warm in here, I think, but it's okay. It's not so bad. Summertime might be a problem. All right, let's go. Hello. In this video, I'm going to look at how to create a certain kind of effect, the effect that you see behind me, where you have things that are drawing in a window. Um, <laughs> let me start this video over. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so, so uh, by the way, Spiky Cat who just joined asked what language is this. This particular example that I'm running I'm, is actually running in processing just because it is a project that I made uh, 14 years ago <laughs> and I recently ported it to processing. But I'm going to demonstrate how to code something like this in P5.js. But I, I, I will port all of these except for the checkbox when I can't port. Anything, anything that I can port to processing, I will port to processing. Okay. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> Hello, I am here to make a video to show you how to program a certain kind of thing, a kind of thing like the thing you see behind me, which is, oh, I have to stand still for this to happen. But um, what you see behind me is a flocking system. There are all of these little squares floating around the screen. And what they're doing is they're picking up pixel values, color values from a camera that's in front of me and smearing those colors onto the screen. So this is a project that I actually, I think that I made around 14 years ago. I'm running an updated version of it that runs in processing. And what I'm gonna do is show you how to actually make something like this happen in the browser using JavaScript, P5.js, HTML5, Canvas. Um, so let me just mention a few other things about this that you'll see is that, so if I, if I click the mouse here, which um, I'm now I'm, clearing the background, and what you'll see is they're just all of these squares moving around the screen. Now they're using this kind of like bees swarming, insects swarming sort of kind of like motion, and you can see that's what the camera is actually seeing up behind me. And so if I let go of the mouse, instead of clearing the background, these agents will just simply uh, you know, keep drawing those colors, but their, their trails are being revealed. So how, does, how do you program something like this? Let's, so I'm gonna close this down. I, um, and I'm going to minimize processing here. And I've got a P5.js example that I'm going to start with. And the example just has a couple things. It has a live video and it has a single particle. Now, this particle comes from a previous video that I will magically have an annotation pop up that references where I showed you how to have something move around the screen and draw a trail of itself. And you can see here, and it's going to move randomly. So 
the, uh, you know, in the swarming thing, they're swarming like insects. Here, it's just going to move randomly. But if you decide to take this example and do something with it, you might think of different kinds of motion, spiral, et cetera, whatever that you might think of doing. So let me run this particular example right here. And you can see this is all it is. You can see that there is a video DOM element giving me a sort of low resolution image of myself that I can use to pick up pixel colors. And there is a thing moving around the screen randomly, a single particle. So the first thing that I want to figure out how to do is how do I have this particle actually grab colors from that video? And, um, so notice that I say video.loadPixels. Um, one thing that I'm going to do just right now for a second is put background back into draw. And I'm going to run this again. So you can see this is what's happening. So what I want is for that particle to be colored according to what's in the video. So this is actually kind of an easy thing to do, surprisingly enough. In the particle object itself, notice how it gets a fill color which is always 255 comma 150. So it's white with a little bit of alpha. But I don't want this to be 255. Rather, what I want is to get some sort of color from the video. Dot get, this dot x, this dot y. So this is kind of the idea here. What I want is I have the canvas with a particle moving around. And I have this particular video with a portrait you know, of myself. So this particle should look up the corresponding color in the video and set its fill. And this particle's location is at this dot x, this dot y. So I should be able to just say, give me the pixel value at this dot x, this dot y in the video. Only I can't, right? Because if you notice, this canvas is actually 640 by 480. And my video is actually 40 by 30. So what I need to do is I need to scale down. So wherever the particle is, it's x and y. I need to scale it down, dividing by 16 to find the corresponding pixel value in the video. So let's come back over here and do that. So what I think could be useful is to make another variable. I'm going to call it px for like pixel x. I just made a weird like arm motion that I don't know what it means, pixel x. <laughs> um, px, and I'm going to say this.x divided by v scale. If you remember, v scale is a variable that I have that keeps track of how big is the canvas relative to the video. And I'm going to make another variable called py, which is this.y divided by v scale. And I'm going to say, now give me the color at px py. Now there's a slight issue. P5, I wonder if P5 actually doesn't care. Let's keep going. There's an issue, which is that I might get the number 4.79831255, which is not a valid pixel value. Pixel values are only whole numbers, integer values. Pixel 4, pixel 7, there's no pixel 7 and a half. So I might need to add something to this to correct that, but let's just sort of see at least what happens. Now, what is in this variable col? Let's just see if this even works. And I'm going to add console.log the color. And I'm, by the way, I'm not using the word color. <laughs> Even though I have a variable that's describing a color, color, the word color is a keyword in P5. It's an actual function. So I'm just saying col for kind of short for color. So let's now go back and run this again. We have a view of our console here. We can see I'm only ever getting black. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> I don't think it should be black. Uh, 00255. So let's go and let's add this thing that I want to add, which maybe will fix it, saying floor. So what floor does is it takes any number that might be a decimal number and lops off that decimal number. So 3.8 becomes 3, 3.3 becomes 3, 3.9 becomes 3, 7.2 becomes 7. Just takes that and gives me a nice integer whole number, which is what I need. And let's run this again. It's still getting only black here. Oh, no, there we go. It just took a minute for the video to like come alive. So you can see this is working and that it's pulling out color values. You can see they're all very green because it's probably wandering around the green screen behind me. So what can I do now? I should be able to say, and notice, by the way, that this is an array. So the get function gives you a single pixel and it gives you an array, a red, green, blue, and alpha value. So what I can do is I can say now, fill, now fill the red value. There's a bunch of different ways I could do this, but, and this might be sort of a silly way, but I'm just going to say, let me actually now take the red, green, and blue values to color that particular. And I can take out console.log. I can run this again. And you can see, come alive, video. You can see, look, it's green. <laughs> and you can see if my face gets in there. 
There we go, it's picking up colors. So good, we're getting somewhere. Now let's go back to sketch.js. Let's put, let's take out background and draw and put background back in setup. And you can see now it is going to start painting me if I stood very still, but rather slowly and who knows how long and how patient we can be here to kind of do this. So what, what we might make this better is to have a lot of these in the window. So what I think would make more sense is for me to make an array called particles. Let's start with 100 of them. And let's say particles index i equals a new particle. So instead of having a single variable particle, let's have an array of particles. Let's make a whole bunch of them. And then everything, I can do a loop here through all the particles. And just say particles index i, update particles index i, show. And now I can run this again. And we can see, there we go, as I move around, you can see I'm kind of getting this like very pointillist like portrait of myself. Now there is no swarming, there is no flocking, it's just random motion. Also these particles, they're leaving the window, they're gone forever. Let's see if we can just make a few improvements to this, at least to keep it a bit more stable. So one thing that I think is kind of important here, um, and might be worth, it might be worth actually making like a little slider for this. I'm gonna add a slider. Uh, is that that alpha value is going to make a big difference in uh, what it looks like. So alpha goes between 0 and 255. Let's start in the middle at 127. And so I'm going to make a slider, and then I'm just going to take this alpha value, alpha value and have it be the value of that slider. So we can sort of see what happens here with like less alpha, you know, no alpha, like uh, less alpha. More alpha? I don't know. What is it? You can get that. So it's fuzzier or harsher. So that's one thing that's sort of important to see. The other thing that I think might be good to do is add some kind of constraints like uh, this dot x equals constrain its value between zero and width. I could probably come up with a better solution. This dot y, zero dot height. So I don't ever want it to leave the window. Um, so I want to keep it always on in the window. And so we can see now, uh, and they're all starting from the middle. Maybe I should, maybe I want to have them all start from, uh, you know, a random spot in the window. Just, uh, so let's do that. So you can see here, and uh, now that's working. Let's see what happens if now I, <laughs> go and uh, make 500 of them. This is it even going to run? Come video. So you can see well, there's an issue here, which is like performance is a bit of an issue. Even though I have so many more now that I'm kind of more quickly seeing the image resolve, whether or not I want that, I don't know. But it's running rather slow. So there is a limit to how much we can really draw on canvas. Let's try 200 and see if it's kind of a smoother animation. There we go. So 200 seems pretty good. Another thing that I might add to this, I'm going to stop, and, is uh, maybe a variable for uh, size. So I'm drawing them all as a 24 by 24, but maybe I should make a random size between like 4 and 32. And uh, so each one of these particles will actually be a different size, um, which it might be kind of an interesting effect to have sort of like smaller dots and larger dots. I don't know if that's really helpful. I'm gonna try to stand still for a second. Um, you get the idea, I could keep going with this. So what I would say, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a few things that I wanna mention here. Number one is, um, there's a couple things that I'm doing in the, in the original example that I showed you that maybe I won't add right now, but I'll mention. One thing that, you might, that, that can be an issue is that if you have, depending on what your motion is, if you have a particle that's here, and then the next frame it's over here, there's going to be this sort of jump. So one thing that I did do in, that you could consider doing is wherever the particle moves to, also draw particles in between them so you always get this continuous line. You could also use actually just the line function and keep track of its previous location and its current location. That's one thing that you might consider. The other thing that you might consider is averaging color over time. So let me, let me, let me explain what I mean by this. So let's say there is, uh, this is the figure that the camera is seeing, and this is the particle and it's moving this way. 
And this is the painting that it's making. So, and this is a red sweater and this is a black background. What you're going to see based on what I've done here is red, 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 black, right? This being that edge. The particle is going to instantly change to the next color because it's literally drawing the color it sees with the pixel. But if every time it moves, you just average in a little more color, then that creates a smearing effect. So what you would see instead is red, 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 a little less red, a little less red, a little less red, blacker, 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 black, 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 red, a little more red. So it's going to average the color as it's moving. So in order to do that, what you would need is for your particle object to actually store a color and when you get the color from the video to average that new color with the color that it's storing. So I'll leave that as an exercise. I mean, I'll try to post an example that does that. There's actually a P5 function called lerp color that will do this math of averaging for you that you could look at using. Uh, boy, I really kind of want to add it right now, but I'm not going to. Um, but, and then the other thing I would say is to really think about is what is the motion. So, you know, if I go back really quickly, just to remind ourselves what this looks like with the background on, right? You can see this is, this is the motion of my particles that are painting the image. But what if all the particles just move left and right or up and down, or they use a flocking system, or they're all bouncing off of each other, or they're all spiraling around. So what are some other ways that you can think of how those brush strokes are created? And in addition, like, are you just drawing circles? Are you smearing like, you know, image textures or rectangles? There's a lot of possibilities here. So think about all those possibilities, maybe make some sort of painting thing, pixel, whatever, and uh, share it with me on Twitter in the comments and uh, ask your questions and I look forward to see what people make. Under 50 minutes, thank goodness. Okay, uh, see you soon. Okay, I, uh, is, there's something to be said for practicing these videos before you do them. Okay, um, boy, there's a, dis a whole discussion here in the, um, in the chat. Uh, people are talking about neural networks. Uh, yes, uh, you know, um, Nyan Cat fan, you know, this is, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, I don't, maybe this isn't what you uh, meant to discuss or what you were actually talking about, but in the Nature of Code book, I do have a chapter on neural networks. It's all the way down here. Uh, chapter 10, and I would say it's, this chapter is a little bit of a cop-out. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like a little bit tacked on, like the whole, all of this material flows together, one from the other tells this story, and then there's this kind of like tacked on neural network thing, which is kind of like, eh, this is sort of what it is, and here's some examples, and then here's visualizing drawing the diagram, but no actual applications. So I'm actually working on a revised version of this chapter. Um, uh, based on new things that have come alive in the world of machine learning for artists. There's a great uh, Cadenze course uh, by Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Fiebrink, if I pronounce her name correctly, from Goldsmith. It's an online course from a company called Cadenze about machine learning for artists. Gene Kogan is somebody that you could look up who's creating uh, tons of tutorials and information about machine learning. Has showed me, he showed me the other day some different JavaScript libraries for using neural networks. So you know, I don't, I, I don't. Um, so I'm going to try to make that chapter. It's not going to be a comprehensive, suddenly like machine learning book, but have a bit more depth to it, and perhaps one or two actual practical examples that you could apply to the, some of the motion-based stuff that's in the book. So we'll see if that's kind of on my list of things to do now, this spring slash summer. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> uh, some people are saying hi. James Johnston says, you're late. Sorry, I'm just about finishing up for right now today. It is, oh yeah, it's after two. So I unfortunately have to go. Um, I, let's look at my list here. Um, videos to do. All right, so I didn't get to the slit scan or seriously.js. I'm gonna see if I can come back later. I, by the way, so every time I've said this, I haven't come back, but, I, but I'm gonna see if I can come back in an hour and a half or so, two hours, and do one or two more videos. This is gonna be tight today to do that. However, I will be doing more videos on Thursday and Friday of this week. So I'm definitely gonna to get to these last two topics on Thursday and or Friday, and then I'm hoping, now that I have a sort of better lighting set up in here, um, to be able to uh, start, I think what I wanna do is, 
Uh, this week, sorry, let me go back. My plan is to do the um, Git tutorials, get those going, and then also, um, because I'm teaching a workshop next weekend on uh, Twitter bots, I want to, um, I'm probably going to be making some more examples with Node and P5, and so I might um, try to do these sort of like Node uh, tutorials um, next week as videos as well. So we'll see if I get to that. Um, let me just see if anybody has any last questions. Um, I have not seen mar slash io, but I'm going to look that up. Oh, and somebody asked, what's the difference between lerp and lerp color? Great question. So lerp stands for linear interpolation. It's a way of linearly moving between two values. And the regular lerp function just says, like, if I have the value 0 and the value 10, and I want to lerp 60%, I'm getting the value 6. So it's just lerping a single value. What lerp color does is because color is not a single value, but a collection of red, green, and blue values, is it the lerp color function allows you to say, take these RGBs and this target RGBs and lerp all three of those all in one. So lerp color is exactly the same as lerp, but it's doing it with multiple values for a color. Hopefully that made sense. Um, uh, yes, yes, those are the great feedback about the neural network chapter, Nian Cat Fan. Thanks for that. Okay, um, thanks for the nice comments. Thanks, Arger. Ah, Mr. Breitz Gamer says, I'm French. Do you speak French? Well, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, unfortunately an American, and in this country, no one ever bothers to like do a really good job of making us learn lots of other languages, which we really should to be a citizen of the world. But I did happen to learn French when I was in middle and high school, so I do speak un peu de français. Um, <laughs> but that's about other languages, not very much. Um, but I would love to learn more languages and speak more languages. I would really like to have all these videos translated and subtitled, but I, uh, right now it's sort of, um, I'm, uh, right now I really would just like them to be closed captioned for people who are hearing impaired. Um, uh, and so that's sort of my number one priority right now. And then I would also like to have them translated. So if anybody has any ideas about how to do that, I'm looking into crowdsourcing or paying services and, and different ways of doing that. I will be getting to that. Uh, okay. Uh, Make a bot to do that. I don't know if that's what you're. Uh, I don't know if that's what you'll make. Uh, make what you're referring to. Anyway. Um, okay. I uh, is it essential to write this variable in the class? I'm not sure. If, anyway, uh, okay. I gotta go. <laughs> so I'll be back. Uh, send me your questions on Twitter or in the YouTube comments. Uh, you can always post questions to the processing forum and then send me a link to your forum post. That's much preferable to email questions. It's too much. I can't I, email questions. I'll, I have a trouble getting to them. It's not my that I desire to get to them, but it's sort of hard to maintain. So if you have questions, YouTube comments, Twitter's sort of not the greatest place to post a question, but it's a good place to get in touch. But posting a complex question in a processing forum and you know tweeting me a link to that. That's a good way. Okay, uh, back maybe today. If I have time to slip one more in, otherwise Thursday or Friday. Definitely not tomorrow though. Tomorrow I have other things on my schedule so I won't be here in the recording studio. See y'all.